Uh, Dr. Um, I'm unhappy. I treated him and finally he got a implant. And six months later he came back and he said, you made me happy. After you came to the Germany, was there any difference between the Kyrgyzstan training and the German training? Yes, definitely. So mm -hmm. the German training is more essential. Mm -hmm. One of my teachers, mm -hmm. he was a senior urologist in Mannheim, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Martinez, mm -hmm. Francisco. He always told me the system in Kyrgyzstan or in those not developed countries or the healthcare professional are not stupid. So it doesn't mean that medicine or medical education is wrong there or not mm. correct. It is not true. Mm. On the other hand, it is not correct that medical education in Germany is always perfect. But what I can say in why I choose to study urology in Germany, because it's very essential. So you learn each step many times and you rotating, for example, you learn incontinence treatment very properly. If you finish this, then you learn andrology very properly, mm. then stone treatment. Mm, mm. And this is the curricula. This is a very good organized uh, way of um, education for the medical student, which I didn't have in Kyrgyzstan. On the one other hand, uh, I was able, after finishing school in Kyrgyzstan, mm. to do radical prostatectomy, to do big surgeries, mm. to do nephrectomy, mm -hmm. which is not the case in, in the German way of educational system. In those countries, uh, it's more pr practical dedication, and in Germany, it's more uh, basic on the high level. So, let's say in theoretical point of view. I suddenly got, a, got a curious, you know, with your German training, Daniel, if you went back to the Kyrgyzstan, you could have earned, made a lot of money, good fortune. Why did you stay in Germany? Well, I tried to. You tried? Yeah, and even uh, in cooperation with the local guys, we opened uh, a private hospital there. And I even spent the money to be a partner uh -huh. with my good friend. He is a very wealthy mm -hmm. person. And Another guy, he, he is a ur urologist there, also a very good friend of mine. But um, we don't know in this life how it turns. So in that time, I got married with uh, Elena. Elena. Uh. And it's the first. And the second, the private situation also changed. So I must stay one or one and a half year more than I planned. Uh. And then suddenly the situation with this private project also got difficult there mm -hmm. because of many reasons, not only uh, because of my mm -hmm. problems. So, and then uh, I decided to stay. Under understandable, because some Korean doctors are doing that. I mean, they get a doctor's license here, go to US, get trained to come back here and start their own you know, name and saying that they got a US training. So I was thinking, why not for you? But still, you married a German lady, Elena, and she didn't want to leave Germany, I guess. <laughs> yeah, she, she didn't want to live in Kyrgyzstan. This was one of the... <laughs> another she, point. She, she has a, she, she, her family is in Kiel? Yeah, ah. the family in Kiel. Understandable. Oh. Once you're married, you're done. <laughs> you're done, yeah. <laughs> so you have to think about mm. somebody else. Mm. You are treating many, many subspecialties of the... Urology, right? Yeah. Robotic surgery and uh, you know microscopic surgery and the male erectile dysfunction, especially penile implant. Among these fields, what do you like most? Penile implant. Why? In surgical andrology. <clears throat> Why? Because uh, maybe to answer you, I already told the story, but I always, even if it's twice or third time, but uh, I like the story because this is a great example of uh, how I. Um, think about this and how it's happened to me. So um, I had a patient, he was really young, younger than me. He was on those days 36 years old with prostate cancer. I did uh, robotic uh, prostatectomy because of cancer mm -hmm. um, and I made him impotent. So I couldn't preserve neurovascular mm. bundle because he had a, uh, well advanced mm. prostate cancer. Six months later, he came to me mm. after prostate cancer and he said, Doctor, um, I'm unhappy. Oh. 
but thank you for saving my life. Mm. And then I understand, he said first that he is unhappy. Mm. And only on the second, uh, with his second phrase, he said that, thank you, thank you, mm. that I saved your life. And I said, why? I mean, I said you saved your life more or less. So you survived from cancer, for PSA was zero. But he said, you know, I'm a young man and I'm not a man anymore. Oh. So you steal my masculinity oh. or my male uh, function. So that is why I don't want to leave. Mm. I treated him and finally he got an you know, implant. Mm -hmm. And six months later he came back and he said, uh, you made me happy. <laughs> Finally. Finally. And then I thought about this and think, okay, this is very complex. Robotic surgery, very nice one. And I love radical prostatectomy. It's still my favorite surgery. But on the other hand, penile implant is something unique that gives uh, you ability to make somebody happy. Even though Elena is my wife, I love her and she loves me, I hope so, but she never told me that I made her happy. Oh, and this patient mm. told me that. And I know mm. because the male will never tell you this very openly mm. to the other male. Correct. It was deep from his heart. Mm. And this is something unique you cannot replace by the other kind of treatment. Those results or those outcomes. During my residency uh, where I was trained, Daniel, it was uh, the only tertiary center in supporting 8 million population. So we had a lot of uh, cancer surgeries, like a prostate cancer, you know, kidney cancer, bladder cancer. So I was lucky getting a good training as a trainee. After the, right after the, I mean, radical pro prostatectomy, patient says, thank you to the residents and my professors. But when they come back in six months or a year later, they didn't say thank you. No. They were keep complaining about, I got a urine leakage, this thing doesn't work. It got smaller it, and I feel, you know, terrible and those stuffs. I was curious when I was in residency, you know, we saved that man's life. He survived now. It's better than uh, living, than, you know, having an erection, but he will die, right? So uh, I was curious, I couldn't understand it. After I got my specialty as a penile implant and, uh, you know, erectile restoration, and after the surgery, six months later, when they come back, they told me, thank you. You helped me a lot. They really say out of their heart. I never saw, like you said, man says thank you to the others like this. I mean, I was at first perplexed. Why? That gave me a huge question. And that's the reason why after that, I was thinking about, keep thinking about the quality of life medicine. Maybe when we were in the in the past days, we only focused about the life or death medicine. We were, you know, surrounded by it, or we were too obsessed with it. But actually patients, many of them, are crying out. They're agonized because of the lack of the quality of life medicine. May, similar and uh, somewhat different experience from my own. That's the reason why I love my profession. And when I went to your practice, I was able to see that you loved penile implant surgery. <laughs> so that's the reason why I asked you about this question. Thank you. But it's a great example of that we are all human. We are all human beings. And it works or the same situation in Germany, in Korea, in the United States, in all countries. I think we all think equal. The other funny thing is that as I'm an Asian, and I was only, you know, had a Korean experience in here, so I always thought that Western countries like Germany or the US or the UK, Australia, men in that areas, Western countries, would have more uh, open attitude toward uh, their sexual dysfunction. But whenever I go there and meet the doctors over there, they told me the same thing. Men are men. They never share their difficulties no. with the others at all. So now I think that regardless of the culture, men, is, men are men. <laughs> And they seldom share their problems with yeah. the others, especially, you know, their best friend. Yeah. <laughs>